it was one of those days when Ernest or the Yerwick was feeling gloomy. I have been thinking, he said to his friend, Edward, if people take any notice of us Yerwicks, he is usually just to say yuck and flitters away. Why does anybody ever write stories about us? What do you mean? asked Ye Edward. Well, said Ernest, when have you ever heard of a book about an earwig? Like the mystery of the phantom earwig or the adventures of super earwig? Why are we always left out? Edward thought about this. I don't know, he said. Exactly, said Ernest. Neither do I. Then Ernest said, I mean, take nursery rhymes for nursery rhymes, for instance. Why aren't we in any of those? After all, this is after all, why is the spider there with little Miss Muffet? True, said Edward, and it could have been little Bo Beep with has lost her sheep and her earwig, or sing a song of six pence a full a pocket full of rye, four and twenty yearwigs baked in a pie. What about, said Edward, there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many yearwigs, she didn't know what to do. Perfect, said Ernest. Oh, they write about birds and bees and butterflies and ladybirds. Edward interrupted, ladybird, ladybird, fly away home. Your house is on fire, your earwigs are gone. A tear came down, came into Ernest's eyes. Much better, he said, very moving. It was that night when the moon was full, and everything looked the colour of blackberries, that Ernest had his great idea. It came to him quite suddenly, as all the best ideas do, and it made him tremble. I have to get into a book, he thought. That's it. I must get into a book and be part of a story so that people will understand the importance of earwigs. I must do it. I shall do it. I felt so excited about his idea that he he felt so excited about his idea that he couldn't sleep. He so he sat and thought about his great plan until the night was over. Very early the next morning, Ernest hurried along to the bookshop. He waited for the shop to open, then he stirred inside. He saw a sign that said children's literature. Ernest knew that, that the word literature was just a fancy name for books. That's it, Ernest said to himself. The, most, the moment I've been waiting for. He ran up and down the shelves, reading the titles, until he came to Alice in Wonderland. Alice had so many exciting adventures, and such strange things happened to her, like falling down a rabbit hole and meeting all sorts of odd creatures. He slid into the book, and to his delight, he found he had come in at the page where the Mad Hatter was having a tea party. There was the Dormouse fast asleep. There was Alice and the March Hare. And no earwig, said Ernest Tipperdale. He sat on top of the Mad Hatter's head so that Alice could see him. Ever since Ernest was a tiny earwig, he had loved fairy tales, so he straddled along the shelves until he found Cinderella. He squeezed between the pages, and there she was, sad and lonely. He shouted as loud as an earwig can shout, which isn't loud. Don't worry, Cinders, you shall go to the ball. But Ernest couldn't wait for her to reply, because he, did, he had to get into the next book. He then slid in and out of the pages of his favourite story, The Wind in the Willows, where there was more walking through the snow in the woods. He was frightened so Ernest crawled in onto his shoulder and whispered, 
I'm here, I'm with you. Then it was on to Treasure Island, the, exciting, the excitement of sharing Jim's adventure made Ernest's heart beat faster. Though he felt a bit sick on the ship and stayed well away from Long John Silver's parrot, he climbed back onto the shelves again and this time came to Peter Pan. At first he crawled into the page with the parrots and the crocodiles, but he thought that was much too scary so he decided to fly with Peter and Wendy and the boys to Never Never Land. I am flying, I am flying, straight on till morning, he shouted. He heard Tinkerbell laugh and he felt so happy. After his adventures, Ernest was in need of the rest. At last he knew what it was like to be in a boat. The bookshop would be closing in a minute, so Ernest took one last look at the shelves and just for a moment it seems as if Every, every title include an earwig. When he got home, he told Edward everything that had happened. Today, said Ernest, I set out to prove that every creature, no matter how small, no matter how insignificant, no matter how unimportant they may seem, deserves the chance to be noticed. I couldn't have said it better myself, said Edward. My dear friend, Ernest continued with tears in his eyes, today has made a new earwig of me. I feel it is only proper that I should write a book about my experiences, my struggles, my achievement for everyone to read. Oh, definitely, said Edward. I mean, you must. What will you call it? Ernest thought, then said, the importance of being Ernest the earwig. Ernest dropped up in quite a few books after that. In fact, if you turn the pages, you'll probably find he has managed to get into this one.